Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Firehouse Chili and Cornbread Casserole. That's right, everybody knows that firemen make the best chili. Many using a recipe very similar to this. And the only way I know of to make that chili even better is by topping it with a cheesy cornbread crust. And by the way, if you think this stuff is just like eating a bowl of chili with a piece of cornbread, well then, you've never had this stuff. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And we'll begin by tossing a diced onion into a lightly olive oil chili pot set over high heat. We'll also toss in a couple teaspoons of kosher salt, as well as a couple pounds of ground beef. And personally, I go for the 85 to 15 lean to fat blend, but even something a little leaner would work here. But anyway, that's up to you. I mean, you are after all the fire chief of how fatty your beef. But either way, what we'll do for the next five minutes or so is take a wooden spoon or a spatula or a wooden spatula and we'll cook this while breaking up the meat into as small a crumbles as we can. And every time I do this, I get an email or comment from someone that tells me I should be using a potato masher, since that's the best tool for crumbling this meat, which it might be. But I've always used this flat wooden spatula. And when it comes to cooking, it's not always about what the best tool is. It's about what the best tool is for you. So what I'm trying to say is that you should probably try a potato masher here and see how you like it. But anyway, once we have that meat crumbled up and brown, we're going to go ahead and toss in a couple tablespoons of flour, and we will stir that in. And in case you're wondering, I don't usually add flour to chili, but here in this baked casserole format, I think I want a little bit to help tighten up the juices. And then what we'll do once that's been stirred in and cooked for a couple minutes is go ahead and toss in some diced poblano pepper, as well as some crushed or finely minced garlic, followed by our classic chili seasonings, including, of course, some chili powder, some ground cumin, or cumin if you're from uptown. We'll also toss in some freshly ground black pepper, and of course some cayenne, as well as a nice big pinch of dry oregano. And once all that's in there, we'll give it a stir and cook that for about two or three minutes before we move on to adding our tomato product, which we're gonna do in two forms. Okay, we're gonna use a can of diced tomatoes, as well as a can of crushed tomatoes. And if you're noticing those little black dots, that's because I bought the fire roasted varieties which is pretty much available for any tomato product these days. And then we will finish up with a couple cups of nice cold fresh water. And because those tomato cans probably have a little bit of product still stuck on the inside, it seems like a good idea to use those to transfer the water in. And then what we'll do after we stir that in is simply wait for this to come up to a simmer. And as soon as it does, we're gonna to wanna to give it a stir and check for thickness. All right, whenever we use flour for a sauce or a soup or a stew, we can't tell how thick it's gonna be until it starts to boil. So as soon as your chili starts bubbling, we'll want to give it a stir and observe. And after doing so, I decided mine needed another splash of water, especially since we're going to finish this by letting it simmer for about an hour, during which time, of course, some evaporation will occur. So we'll go ahead and adjust that as we see fit, and then we'll lower our heat down to medium-low. And like I said, we will cook this for about an hour, stirring occasionally. And about halfway through that time, after about 30 minutes, we have to make a major decision. And that's whether there's going to be any beans in the scene. And with apologies to my friends in Texas, I will be adding some beans. And for this, I'm recommending kidney beans. And if you can't find those, pancreas beans are also very nice. And that's it. All we need to do is stir those in. And we'll let this simmer for another 30 minutes or so. Or until we decide it's done. Since only we know for sure. And right here, I thought mine was looking just about perfect. Which means my firehouse chili is ready. Just as soon as I give it a taste to make sure it has enough salt and spice. And I decided it did, which means we can go ahead and very carefully transfer this into our casserole dish. And it's right about here when we're gonna figure out if the dish we're using is the right size for the amount of chili we made. And while this was close, it was too much. Okay, we're gonna need to leave about an inch at the top so we can put our cornmeal crust on. So I went ahead and ladled some into a large mug, and I went ahead and had what we call in the business a chef snack, which is one of the many perks of cooking. And that's it, once we have the right amount in there, we'll go ahead and take a spoon to make sure everything's evenly distributed. And yes, of course we could just use a bigger baking dish or make this with less ingredients, but I decided not to do either of those things. And I got a snack. And then what we'll do once our chili's set is go ahead and mix up our cornbread topping, which is gonna start with a couple boxes of store-bought corn muffin mix. And while I won't give the brand, I will give you the color, sky blue. And then to that, I'm gonna add some grated cheddar cheese which is optional, but also mandatory. And then we'll finish this with a couple large eggs and a cup of nice cold fresh milk. 
And that's it, we'll just take a whisk and mix this until completely smooth. And by the way, in the recipe you're gonna notice I'm gonna use a little extra milk than the package calls for. But I think having this cornbread batter a little thinner works better for the casserole application. Speaking of which, because this batter is so runny, we don't wanna just pour it over. All right, what we'll do is apply big spoonfuls over the top until pretty much the entire surface is covered. And then we'll go ahead and drizzle batter around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, as well as into and over any spot that needs it. And yes, I am filling this up dangerously high. But please note, we placed our dish on a sheet pan. Since if you're assembling this like I am, there's roughly a 100% chance there's gonna be some spillage. But don't worry, the final appearance is worth it. And then before we pop this in the oven, I like to sprinkle over a little more cheddar cheese. And that's not totally necessary, but really, what is? And that's it, as soon as that's been cheesed, we will very, very, very carefully transfer this into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so, or until our cornbread crust is cooked. And it looks like this. Man, that looks good. And we actually had a surprisingly small amount of spillage. All right, we did have a little bit, as you can see in this shot, which I've cleverly hid in the back because of pictures. But considering how high I filled this, nothing too traumatic. And if you're not sure it's done, you can always test with a toothpick, which should come out clean. Okay, if it comes out with wet batter, put it back in until it's done. But mine was perfect, so I went ahead and served up. And it's gonna be kinda hard to get with the spoon, but that extra crispy part of the cornbread that's sort of flowing over the edge of the dish, you're gonna wanna peel some of that up and eat it. Yes, that does qualify as another chef's snack. But anyway, we will spoon or ladle that into a dish. And then I like to garnish with a little bit of sour cream. And if I have it around a little bit of torn cilantro, which I really did want just on the sour cream, but unfortunately a couple rogue leaves had their own ideas. So I had to turn off the camera and spend five minutes fixing it like I wanted. At which point I grabbed a spoon and proceeded to dig into what is one of the great chili experiences of all time. And it's not like there's anything wrong with just eating a bowl of chili with a piece of cornbread. That is like a perfect experience too. But in my opinion, this is just slightly more perfect. Okay, that cornbread crust bakes just like regular cornbread, except underneath we had all that flavorful aromatic chili, which is gonna kinda steam our cornbread as it bakes, creating something you have to taste to believe. And above and beyond the insanely good textures here, the other thing that works so well about this is that our cornbread crust is relatively sweet, which of course pairs perfectly with that spicy, meaty, savory chili underneath. So I just love everything about this. Plus, what better thing to serve to a large group of friends? Which, by the way, is why chili, whether it's just in a pot or served like this, is such a popular menu item in a firehouse. So thank you, firemen, for your service and your chili. And I think I can speak for all of them when I say we really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.